Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we are going to be covering the solution to the problem minimize digit sum from the Code Chef October 2018 long challenge. The problem states you are given positive integers n and d. You may perform operations of the following two types. You may add d to n, i.e. change n to n plus d, or change n to digit sum m. Here, digit sum x is the sum of the decimal digits of x. For example, if you have digit sum of 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6. If you have digit sum 100, 1 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 1. And if you have digit sum 365, 3 plus 6 plus 5 is equal to 14. You may perform any number of operations, including 0, in any order. Please find the minimum attainable value of n and the minimum number of operations required to obtain this value. And the constraints for this problem are that uh, t, the number of test cases, will be between 1 and uh, 10, and the values of n and d will be between 1 and 10 to the 10. So let's take a look at the examples that CodeChef provided us with. So here we have three examples. Uh, n and d are given on the three lines that follow uh, 3, which is t. And then our output for these three should be the following. So uh, Code Chef kindly gave us explanations for each of these examples. So for the first one, 2, 1, it says the value n equals 1 can be achieved by eight successive add operations and uh, changing n to 10 and then a one digit sum operation. So basically, if you start uh, with 2 and then you change that to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 by adding 1, uh, eight times, and then taking the digit sum of 10, you get it down to one. So the minimum value of n that we can get is one, and the fastest we can get to it is in nine steps. For a second example, uh, n equal to nine and three equal, or d equal to three, uh, we have this explanation. You can prove that you cannot obtain n equals one and n equals two, and you can obtain n equals three. Uh, the value n equals 3 can be achieved by one add and one digit sum, uh, changing 9 to 12 and then 12 to 3. So you add 3 to 9, getting 12, and then you take digit sum of 12, and that gives us 3. Uh, we're sort of going to glaze over the fact that they say you can prove that you cannot obtain n equals 1 and n equals 2 because it's not really important in order to solve this problem. And for the third example, we have n equal to 11 and d equal to 13, and the explanation is as follows. n equals 1 can be achieved by the operations add, add, and digit sum, digit sum, which will give us in order 11 to 24, 24 to 37, and then uh, 10 to 1. So we're going to take a closer look at the third example to examine how we can determine uh, that one can be achieved and then also the number of steps that it takes to achieve that minimum result. So here is the start of our visual explanation. And what we are going to do here is construct what will look like a, a tree that is the breadth first search uh, call order of sort of exploring uh, our options from our number n, which in this case is 11. So note that there's only two branches we can take. We can branch uh, to the left, which is where we are going to do a digit sum operation. And we can branch to the right, where we are just going to do adding d to our current number. So if we do that, we get 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2 for digit sum. And if we just add d, 11 plus 13 is equal to 24. So if we continue to do this, we'll notice a couple things. One, when we have a single digit number, digit sum just returns the same number. So we should only be exploring options when we're using digit sum with uh, double digit or uh, more than two digit numbers. So we don't need to do anything for digit sum here. So no branch to the left. We'll branch to the right, though, add 13, and that gives us 15. And then for 24, if we do digit sum, we get 6. And if we add 13, we'll get 37. We continue to do this. 15 digit sum will give us 6. So we'll note here that now we have some duplication. So we'll, we'll be able to make use of memoization here by sort of not exploring something. We know that the first time we see a number in our tree, it's the least number of steps to get there. So uh, we just need to store that value. And then whenever we see it again, you know, don't explore it any further. And if we add 13 to 15, we're going to get 28. We'll sort of skip over 6 here. And if we uh, do digit sum of 37, we're going to get 10. And then if we do add 13, we'll get 40. So one more digit sum of this 10 would get us to 1, which is going to be our minimum number. So our answer is going to be uh, 1. And then we need to output the number of steps, which will be 1, 2, 3, and then the fourth one that we're not showing here on the screen just due to sort of space uh, constraints. So that's the general idea. Um, the tricky part of this question is just how to do this efficiently. 
so the first thing we need to think about is, you know, how are we going to do this? We could uh, implement this recursively, but the way that uh, I'm going to show implementing it is sort of uh, an, an iterative algorithm. So to do that, we're going to use a queue of pairs. And basically what that's going to look like is we'll initialize our queue to just have a single element, which will be a pair where the first is equal to our n value and the second is equal to the number of operations. So obviously, uh, if we have 11 uh, to start with, it's going to have zero operations to get to 11. But then by using digit sum or the adding D, we can get to 2 and 24 in one step. And so we're just going to loop through uh, a while loop. And while this queue is not empty, um, we're going to pop off the first element because a queue is a first in, first out, and then process that. Um, and the second thing we're going to do to keep track of not only our answer, but uh, in order to memoize uh, the most common uh, elements or sort of values that we can get to, uh, we're going to use a map. So this is going to store the value of n in uh, the key, and it's going to store the number of operations uh, in the value. So initially, this map will be empty. And the first time we'll insert something is when we get to the element 2, because we're only going to store single digit numbers. Um, the reason that I did this was because I figured uh, by looking at the examples, you know, one of them you could get to 1, uh, or two of them you could get to 1, and one of them you could get to 3. And if you just sort of work through most uh, like a few examples you can see that almost all numbers are able to get to one with a certain number of operations and it does have the one example that is not able to get to one and it's able to get to three but i figured that the number of cases that aren't able to get to one are going to be able to at least get to some other single digit number uh, which turns out to be the case i don't have a mathematical proof for this it just seemed through i think i did like 10 examples or something and all of them could get to one and it was the only ones where you had n and and D where they were both divisible by three that you know I found that it couldn't get to one so it seemed pretty rare that you couldn't get to one if not at least a single digit number so we're basically uh, gonna insert a single digit number whenever we see it with the number of operations so the first one that'll get inserted is the two where and you can get to two with one operation then you'll insert a six that can get uh, you can get to six with two operations and then both one and four you can get to with four operations so Whenever you uh, see a single digit number for the first time, you're going to insert it uh, with the number of operations that it took to get there. And uh, that is basically going to have your answer by the end of your iteration. So uh, there's a neat trick that you can do to make sure that this doesn't time out by taking a look at the constraints of this problem. But we'll uh, talk about that when we look at the code. So that's basically all you need to know to solve this problem other than that one trick we'll talk about uh, to making sure that it doesn't TLE. You're going to use a queue to process uh, the sort of nodes or your values of n. And you need a map to keep track of what's the uh, minimum number n that you found so far and the number of operations that it took to get there. So let's take a look at our code. So here is our C++ solution. Uh, we can see here at the top, we have a function uh, solve that just takes in our two values, n and d. Note that we're using ll as a type alias for a long, long, because our values can be up to 10 to the 10th. And when we're adding uh, d to it, it could get even bigger. So we need to make sure that we don't overflow on an integer. Uh, coming back to our, our solution, though, we have our queue here, that a queue of pairs, a queue, and then our map uh, of storing our minimum value which is we know is going to be a single digit and the number of operations and this is going to be m so we initialize q to just have our value n with zero operations and then we're keeping track of i here which is sort of the number of operations that we do inside our while loop so we have this while loop while i is less than 10 uh, or 100,000 and q is not empty so I'll come back to why we have this i less than 100,000 at the end. Uh, so for each iteration of this, we're popping off the front element of our queue, and we'll call this t, and then we're checking, is t a single digit number? So is t dot first less than 10? If so, we check if it's already in our map. So if it is already in our map, we can skip the rest of this iteration of our while loop and just go on to process the next element of our, our uh, queue. Um, but if it's not, we want to basically insert this into our map, uh, and we can do this using the bracket operators. So this will insert, t, uh, insert t dot first as the key and t dot second as the value. So this will be our value n and the number of operations it took to get to n. 
And if we don't have a uh, single digit number, then we don't need to worry about, you know, memoizing this and storing the result. We just want to uh, push into our queue uh, another element to process. So we're going to take the digit sum of our uh, value n right now, which we can get just by writing this simple little helper function. So it takes in and just loops uh, to this local sum that does a plus equal of uh, the digit basically, which you can get by using the modulus 10 and then dividing n by 10 until we no longer have a value for n. Once n is zero, you'll just return this value. So we insert the digit sum of n and then we add one to the number of operations that we've done so far. And then for both examples, we want to always uh, push into our queue uh, plus d with plus 1 on the operations. And so then we increment i. And once you get to uh, the end of this while loop, all we need to do is output our first element in our map. So note that in C++, map is a uh, sorted uh, red-black tree or I guess red black tree by default is sorted, but so unordered map is a hash map, whereas a map is a sorted data structure. So we just need to uh, make a call to the begin method in our map, and that'll give us the uh, lowest key, uh, ergo the lowest value of m, and then also output the number of operations that it took to get to it. So coming back to why we have this i less than 100,000. So if you go back to the constraints of this problem, uh, we have that we only have 10 test cases. And if you recall from previous videos that I've uh, mentioned this in, typically the way that problems work is that you have uh, a time limit and the rule of thumb is that you're allowed 10 to the 8 operations per second. And this problem has a one second time limit. So that means that uh, we have 10 to the 8 operations. So if we have 10 test cases, that means per test case, we roughly have uh, 10 to the 7 operations we can do. So uh, I figured for the cases where you know it's gonna uh, it's not gonna empty out the queue and get you to your solution, we want to just sort of in, you know implement this while loop as long as possible. So as long as the time limit uh, gives us. And so I can't remember if the first number that I tried was 10 to the seven or 10 to the six. Here I have 10 to the five. Uh, but at the end of the day, both 10 to the 5 and 10 to the 6 work. 10 to the 7th will give you a time limit exceeded. 10 to the 5th will give you a wrong answer because you didn't perform enough um, iterations of this while loop in order to get to the cor correct lowest value. Um, but that's, I guess, it's sort of uh, a trick. So I'm not sure if this is the official way to solve this solution, but uh, it's basically you know, letting your algorithm run as long as possible uh, without exceeding the time limit. And so if you use 10 to the 5 here in sort of the number of operations that you can use per test case or 10 to the 6, you'll get uh, a full passed solution. So the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which uh, counterintuitively for this is actually constant. So this is not a very efficient solution in that um, you know, we could add a piece of code that says whenever our uh, first element in our map has a key of one, we know that we found the optimal solution because you can't get anything less than one. So we, we don't have that here, and there's other ways you could optimize this solution. So it's not very efficient, but in terms of time complexity, the worst case is not dependent on any of the inputs. Um, it's dependent basically on this hard-coded number here, which means that uh, we have a constant time complexity. So hope that makes sense and hope this was helpful. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.